Good morning, everyone. So today we're at a Kia. It's a Kia Soul, and this is a Quantum edition. This is a 2014 with a 1.6 GDI. So this is a 1.6 GDI engine, right? Uh, direct petrol injection, so you can tell that for the little pump. So the problem with this one is it's got two codes. Uh, let me see. I'll, I'll bring them up. So the problem with this one is it's got two fault codes, a P2191 and a 2188. Both complaining about the engine running rich at idle and at part load. So I already came out to it. First thing to do, take the dipstick up. And indeed, this thing was making oil. So I'll just show you. Right, he's changed the oil and filter now, but see up there? That's where the level of his up to. But it was full of petrol. We could smell it was petrol, right? The oil was contaminated with petrol. It then came up to the air filter and it was smelly as well. I think it was actually wet. And it had a terrible amount of petrol vapour within that. So he changed the air filter, changed the oil, took out the spark plugs and they were completely black. So he cleaned them up, put them back in and we came out this morning, it started first kick. But we're now left with same condition. We're looking at, generic OBD is actually the best, we're looking at a minus 25 fuel trim. So we're far too rich, extremely rich. So we're thinking, there's a couple of issues with this engine. It can either be a stretched timing chain, but we looked at the PIDs and they look okay actually. Cam to cam, the phasing and everything like that. So we're not going that road really. But the other issue with this engine is this high pressure fuel pump can leak petrol down through. But here's the gotcha, when we started the car, petrol pressure seemed to get up immediately. So, could that be the issue? Don't know. So what we're thinking, our next step was to take the pump off and just have a quick look. See if we can smell petrol coming out the base of it. Because, really rich. When I say really rich, it's almost like the injectors are spraying in too much. Or maybe time is out. But you go to start somewhere, so I think maybe the easiest thing is try and remove this pump and see if we can find any evidence. Right, so we've popped out the pump, just two 10 mil bolts, and you had to crack the high pressure line off. So we're looking at this, and we're not really convinced it is, because look, that looks quite sooty, and you think if there was petrol going down there, that that would be clean. And then when we, when we cracked the pipe, there's plenty of pressure came out, so it's, it's retaining pressure. <coughs> so, I'm not saying it isn't that, but doesn't it look like that, Roddy, does it? Doesn't it? Ah, yeah. You would think when we took that out, you wouldn't have very little pressure, but we had bags of pressure. Because we're thinking if it was leaking pressure, it would leak down, it would leak down for everywhere, but... Oh, the jury's still out. So maybe timing? Or a, le a bad injector? But... Don't know. So we we'll probably need to take... Probably need to take this a drive, but here's some of the OBD readings, so... Absolute load, 23%. Uh, barometric. 97 kPa. Well, we're up. Should be about 100, but that seems about right. Calculated load. Catalyst temperature. That gets high quite quick, actually. Voltage is okay. Distance, degrees, that's all right. Engine equivalence, right. We're at 0 0.726. One or above is lean, one or below is rich. So we are extremely rich. A revap system, vapour pressure, well actually that's closed. Because we tried that, we took... There's the evap valve there, so we actually bled some air in it. It helped it a little bit, but still was rich. Ugh. Fuel rail pressure, I, I think that seems about right. 40 bar. There we go, 38 bar, I think that's normal for a GDI system. The newer ones are higher. We've seen on that the little Citroen was 100 at idle. This is an older one, so that's it. We're in closed loop. It's looking for one. Uh, ignition timing looks all right. Air intake, 39 degrees. Or intake manifold rod is now at 47. 
When we started this car for coal, we were at 33. But I think it's coming down because of the mixture. That's real bad. Oh, long term, minus 35%. Oh dear. Our ox there you go, our oxygen sensor current, we're at minus 1.44. Now that should be hovering about zero. Downstream, we're at rich, we're extremely rich. Short term, minus 25. So there you have it. So where do we go for here? Injectors, carbon on intake manifold. But the very fact that our dipstick was high with petrol, we think we've got... With, we're leaning towards a leak on the injectors or a leak on the pump but there's nothing we could see in the pump so one bad injector I don't know oh I don't care if we should ignore that or not so what we've done here the, as you could hear the engine was ready to cut out so we've just pulled this pipe off uh, I'm not sure if OBD's Accurate. So we're still at minus 25%, but look at this. Our oxygen sensor's at minus 0.8. So that still seems high. And minus 41. Our intake's improved. Our ignition time is up because we're now up 1,500 RPM. The equivalence is still bad. So even letting all, all that extra air in, it's no, it's no changing a lot of your figures. I see the plugs ready. Right. <laughs> so the name, <laughs> So there's the nick of the plugs. That's they were actually cleaned up, and that's them back in just after five minutes idling. So, oh, the roasting. Bad. Right, so we took the plugs back out, cleaned them up, popped them back in. So we're going to crank it over. And you can see, even sitting here, our fuel rail pressure is at 125 bar. So there's plenty of pressure in it. So that would say to me that that pump is not le le leaking down, nor is the injectors in the rail. Because there's no way that that would hold pressure. In fact, the injector rail is buried under the intake manifold, so no, we're kind of got access to that anyway. So you want to crank it out, Lionel, let's see what pressure's got and see if the thing starts. But as I say to you, the plugs have been cleaned off. Plenty of pressure. Over away. Yeah, rev, my man. Alright. So you can see we idle about 40 bar. Rev it, Lionel! Now that's strange when he revs out that pressure doesn't go up. We'll give it a run on the road and see. Well, we see there's plenty of power in this, even I'm accelerating. We're getting up to 150 bar, that must be its maximum. And then the voltage gets up to 3.2. So power's no an issue. Let's keep driving. So here is the procedure for doing this job on this Kia Soul and all data for check the timing basically, right? So you see the instructions there, you don't need to bother that, don't need to bother removing the front wheel. Remove the engine pan, just a short one, don't bother that step there about the AC. Disconnect that one at the top, that's for the C intake, uh, for the variable camshaft. Disconnect all the coils. Disconnect all these connections round about the high pressure pump, that's right. And then remove the oxygen sensor, you don't need to do that. Then don't need to remove this pipe, you can leave this hanging. Uh, don't need to bother that step. Disconnect that line, I think that was a 19mm nut. And remove these two 10mm bolts, out it pops, move the coils, remove that bit there, that was that guy there, just wiggle him out, then remove the cylinder head, and he up pops through, don't need to bother the tensioner or anything like that, or the drive belts, leave them well alone, don't need to bother the, that, or that, or that, don't bother that, 
Right, so that's our marks at the bottom. It's old fashioned wee. Zero degrees and there's a mark on the pulley. Now I've got that, I'll let you see. Right, we decided to remove the, what's that called, rocker cover. So there is the engine in all its glory. It was either remove the rocker cover or get a crank, a crank cam correlation. So it was only about 20 minutes to remove, so I think you're actually quicker just doing it this way. Anyway, here's some, just, it's not, it's not timed up yet, it's not TDC, but look at the chain. Look at that, there's a bit of slack in that, I would say. So we're going to put the, the bottom to TDC, and these marks should line up, up the top. There should be, I think it's nine spaces between them. And, I don't know, we'll work it as we go along, but I think that's a problem. Look at the slackness in that chain. Anyway, some of the salient points about removing the rocker cover. A lot of them, they're all 10 mil, it's actually quite handy. The longer bolts are in the middle here. I'll show you that. So that's the longer bolts in there. The rest are all 10 mil short. Uh, had to remove the the pump. There it's lying down the back. You keep that clean. Oh, the other thing is, watch this little guy here. That is, that's like the, the camshaft plunger for the pump. So that can fall out, so make sure you can catch that. That goes into one of these holes. And this bit here, that's the, uh, that'll be the exhaust camshaft solenoid valve. So you've got to pop that out, just a little bolt up the top there. I'm going to put that back in, just when I remember. So that goes there, and I'll show you the solenoid. There's the solenoid valve there. Now that actually looks quite clean. So I just took it out with a set of ice grips. Wiggle, wiggle, and out it popped. So here looks not too bad. So let's get our TDC mark on the bottom. And let's see how this lines up. And try and get you the old data. See how it does it. There's a yellow... See that? Oh. See, I've got the yellow mark. See right in the middle of the picture, there's a yellow mark on the crankshaft. Now that corresponds with TDC. And I know I'm at TDC if I do it the old-fashioned way. Because look, that doesn't go down very far. He's right at the top. But if I put that one in, he drops down. So look at that. So I'm either at TDC on exhaust or TDC on compression. So that one's, this one should be down. It is. That one should be down. It is. And number four should be get in man oh and it is and you can see here i've got a little timing mark time a different link there but when i look at the side of these cams they do not line up so let's give it one more turn and see if that makes any difference because that looks wrong compared to the picture i've seen because if you look at this picture once you may remove that don't bother that we've just checked the timing we're not replacing anything yet Come down there, come down there, there we go. You're meant to mark your chain. And look, there's two marks there. Ours are certainly no lining up. So it says, put paint marks on the timing chain links three places that meet with the timing marks on the CVVT sprockets in an exhaust. So that's the timing marks here. And we ain't got nothing like that. TDC and we think we're on the exhaust stroke. So you can see I've got a timing mark just right there, and one right there. That doesn't look too far out. And if you look under here, see, I've got a couple of marks. See, just, I'll show you with this. So I've got a mark right there, and a mark there. There. And there. They look all right. Ooh. So we're going to see how many links we've got in this chain. I marked that one with a yellow. So, ooh. so here we go. So Lionel's going to turn this and we'll show how many marks are on this pulley. Right, go for it, Lionel. So there's a... There's a see that dip there? Hmm. Well, see, see, I did. So keep going, lad. So there's... That's the one we've marked. Right.
You see that changed depth, man. We didn't even go back the way. Right. So there's another mark. I don't know what the spacing of these marks are on this chain. Oh, that here, here, this is it. Wait to see. Just come up, Lionel. That looks like where we should be. Keep going, lad. I just keep going, my man. Wait, 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 stop there, stop there. So that looks like the, the, the chain setup it should be, and that should be TDC. And we've only got three of the links like that. So that other one should be at the bottom that we've marked on the crank. So let's see how far off we are for here. Yeah, right. I think our timing is at TDC. I think it's spot on. So you can see our marks here. That one lines up with the dot in that. Then that one lines up with the little dot in that. And see a little marks already will point to them. Just right there, there's a faint mark, and that looks good. And then there's another faint mark. And at the bottom, the crankshaft pulley is at TDC because there's markings on that pulley. It says zero. I think we're good. The only thing I don't like is that slack bit. Oh! I need to put it back together again. So we're going to do a, ca a crank cam correlation after all that. So you disconnect the solenoid for the exhaust cam, disconnect the solenoid for the intake cam, the yellow lead goes down to the crankshaft, and these are two leads going into both of the camshafts. I've not worked at the wiring yet, but let's start and see what waveform we get. So that's our trace with uh, these solenoids disconnected. I say I'll take it, I'll print it, and let you see it. Is that normal? Don't know. Is it off on? Don't know. Has anyone got a good known waveform? <laughs> so Roddy's going to plug in these solenoids, and let's see if that we do in the bottom there. So it's, well, let's keep watching this. So they never moved, but then again, there could be codes for them. So they guys, they guys are back plugged in. But you've seen the trace said that that did not move. Is that trace good? Bad? Or indifferent? We do not know. <laughs>